Zumi's prayers, the echelons of exaltation. I knew a woman in Christ about 14 years ago, caught up from out her body up to the third heaven. She passed peacefully into the presence of the Lord where she remains. This is the center of the stages of our life, which may be called its exaltation. Clearly we are called to glory, though it is perhaps the most difficult grace given from you to grasp, knowing our unworthiness and limitations. Yet this you have decreed, and nothing of any limitation lies beyond you. We have not understood the immensity of your loving bestowals. It may be useful for men to trace the echelons through which our lives pass. Though not born to Eden, the world given us is of magnificent beauty. The heathenest soul gasps upon the sunset shore and upon the moonlit mountain top. The animals entertain us while the flowers and insects tickle us. The birds serenade, the fish evade. Children seek out adventure in their games, moving on to real explanations, explorations of the earth, sea, and sky. In all these ways you instruct us of your gifts and goodness to us. As these dwindle to common acceptance, we enter the stage of the formal knowledge of you, left to us in revelation. Wise parents instruct their children from an early age and must be careful to live out the scriptures, else hypocrisy betray the beauty of the life bestow, you bestow to us. The revelation left to us is infinite, and the wisdom derived from it further so. The consoling spirit accompanies our journey th through this beautiful, revealing entry to your presence. Along the way are many heresies, broad ways of danger. Constant prayer is the necessary safeguard. We will find ourselves in limited company though the church company is a precious flock. If we are called to be among the children of God, it was determined by you before the foundation of the world. Our salvation may be revealed to us in the womb, and we may never breathe life, or given at any stage of life until our last breath. The gift is eternal life and thus may never be taken away. We are rescued from your just wrath over our sin and from hell, its penalty. We are saved. The body into which we are born remains with us, goes into the grave and decomposes. A new resurrected body is given us at judgment day. Its composition is unknown to us only that it is gloriously fitted to heaven. At the moment of our salvation, our soul is discarded as it is not fitted to heavenly life. Immediately a spiritual soul is given us and the Holy Spirit enters to indwell us. This is unconscious except by sanctifying signs in our, be in our behavior it confuses us that our flesh continues to sin. Life in the Spirit is so far other from life on earth that we are not able to associate ourselves being there, yet we are. Thus, there are overlappings of those strata of our progression to your full life. At the moment of our salvation, we fully possess your eternal life, but have little knowledge of you. A lifetime of high theological study is a beautiful way to live, yet it is far short of what we will know. We can never fully know you. The passing through the gate of death before addressed and the reason for our life on earth now comes to be as this peaceful entry to the presence of Jesus, whom we have somewhat known. It is not the full presence, 
of the Father, Son, Spirit, and of the communion of the angels and of the redeemed of all ages. Judgment Day will affect our transition to this life. The elements of time are not notable, though billions of people and thousands of years of moments, events, emotions, ideas and intents come to your scrutiny as they were in history and in eternity, but are now played out before all men and face to face with the Lord who lived among us. It is an awesome moment. We pray to be greatly loved in this moment, and surely we will wondrously adore you, however the sands of time do judge our every moment here. Every knee shall bow. Amen.